Hey guys, so I've taken a lot of notes which I want to get offload now. So this one is to do with how to deal with blame. So the first one is from Ajahn Bram. I'll share a link in the description below. He talks about it like, I think he's a Buddhist or some kind of monk. And he's like, if they call you a dog, look at your backside and see if there's a tail. So he's like, see if there's truth to it and have a sense of humor about it. So that's one. Now, he gave another story of how this farmer was very angry at this donkey because it fell in the hole and he just kept throwing mud at this bloody donkey. He's like, oh, you, you know, just not being very nice. But what the donkey did instead was shake it off, stamp on it to make himself a little bit higher, a little bit higher until he got out. And there is a nice quote by someone along the lines of laying a solid foundation with the brick someone throws at you. I'll try and share that. That's what life throws at you. Life keeps throwing bad things at you and you just take it and make it your superpower. Guitarists, they end up getting calluses and hard bits on their skin because they keep playing guitar. So that's the injury they give, give themselves to play the guitar better. So think of it that way. There's so many other examples like that. Uh, when you blame others, you're disempowering yourself. You're giving your blame the power. Uh, don't blame mistakes, grow from them. In my case, I say that it's good to focus on the mistake in the start, but after you have studied it completely, you have to focus more on the solution than the mistake itself. Now, when you're giving um, criticisms and you want to try and give some feedback to someone, use that sandwich method, give enough compliments until you feel like their ears have opened to take on the negative feedback or constructive feedback. And then again, because it's a sandwich, you close it with more compliments like, I love working with you, you know, you're really good at this and that. And this one's really nice, I like this. You decide what you want to put in the spam folder. So keep in mind and take feedback like your inbox. So that's from Ajahn Brahm. Another one was, there's a video called Blame Shifting Narcissist by Roberta Shale. But this is what she's saying. They're going to get your guard down to get info on you and then use it to hurt you. Observe their, observe their tactics and strategies. Now this is with toxic people. Like she says, like the subject says, narcissist. They don't want to blame you because they're angry for your improvement or trying to give you something. They want to blame you because they want to be toxic to you. So in this case, figure out their tactics and find a way to shield them. They'll find ways to make you explain yourself. You don't need to defend your name or explain yourself. They're so good at it. They'll find a way to make you the victim and then blame you as the victim. And then be like, oh, you're being a victim. Or they'll be like, try and get all the information from you to use it against you in the future. So... It's very clever how they do these things and you just have to find ways to block it. When they create their own stories, affirm your neutrality. Basically, that's not the way I remember it. Just keep affirming, keep your foot steady and say, that's not how I saw it. That's not how things went down because this comes into gaslighting now. And talk only about yourself. Don't talk about what you thought they did and this and that. I have a issue with that. Like I'll try and project. I'll be like, I thought you meant this. And then I'm like, no, no, no. This is how I saw it. This is how I, th I felt we agreed things and stay cool and speak it from your point of view only. Oh, this one's juicy because two people in my life used to do this to me a lot and they really gaslit me. One was, uh, and it's, saying how they know you better than you know yourself. Don't express empathy or sympathy. Do not apologize unless you are really wrong. And Osho says, give, tell them, uh, give me 24 hours to think about this before I give you my reply. That's one of the best things. Give me some time. Let me think about this. Let me get back to you. These are some of my main sentences I use with these kind of people. And then 
once you figured it out, only apologize for the part you were wrong. You don't take the whole blame because it takes two to tango. There were some things they must have done wrong, some things you must have done wrong. So you figure out, you'll be like, yeah, this is the bit. These are the things I went wrong in. And I'm sorry for that. I'll work on it or I'll do this, I'll do that. Just to show that you are going to do your bit. Resist the urge to comfort them. Well, if it's your partner, then it's a different story. But this is taking blame from narcissists. Now, another one's from Andrew Kirby. When you get insulted, it's outside of your control. So you need to stop letting others take control of your mind. Uh, Marcus Aurelius said something along the lines of, you got offended because you chose to be offended. I'll share that quote. It's a very nice quote. You don't change your behavior and don't keep thinking of why they said that or reply what they said. Okay, so don't, you know your shower thoughts, when you're in the shower, oh, I should have said this, I could have told them that, next time I see them, and that's too much. So don't, don't change your behavior, and don't keep thinking, don't keep ruminating in those things. Now there's some numbering in here, so let's see. Internally, you can tell yourself, do I value this person's opinion? If yes, then you need to find out if there is some truth to it. And this is one thing, I have a checklist for myself. I might share it with you, I might not, but first of all, was there truth to it? Second of all, if there was truth to it, are they important enough for me to change? Or do I need owe them an apology? You know, things like that. If it's not true, then the person is not rational. So you need to make the logical conclusion that it's not worth wasting your time on. Okay, that's internally. Externally, you can agree and amplify. So if someone blames you for being ugly, you can be like, yeah, I know I'm ugly. That even dogs run away from me, bringing that sense of humor, bringing that sarcasm. Sarcasm bring, breaks it, breaks the pattern. Um, what do you call it? Breaks the state. And then another external behavior or response you could have is just ignore see stoicism i'll share links on stoicism to my blog post because i love reading those once a year at least just to refresh myself have i been on track what do i need to fix stoicism is very good now this one this is by coach frederick limbo and i already have a criticism on him because he did a whole ted talk when it's just three points so let's go through those three points. First point, it's about me. Do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? This is also Steve Harvey who used to be like when you're in an argument with your partner, you can be right or you can win or you can be happy. And I tell my partner all the time, are we trying to win the argument? Is one side trying to win or we're both trying to win and we're going to come to forget who is right and do what is right for the relationship itself sometimes you just need to you know be right and you know deal with your egos and whatever so you can come to your own understandings for that in your relationship look from the other person's perspective change from me to we look at the other person's intention they're late so they're flashing at you and you're Oh, this is the car one. They're late, or they're flashing at you, or they're tailing you from the back. So you can, instead of uh, jumping to the conclusion, this is a bad driver, bully, this, that, you can be like, oh, this person might be late. This guy might need to go in a hurry, so let them pass. They have an important text, so couldn't focus on the presentation. They have something going on in their lives. Try and put a, a positive story towards their, or, a story that justifies their behavior okay so that one was it's about me second point it's about me in a different way it's hit my insecurity when they have blamed me they've criticized me i'm like oh there's some soft spot here maybe i am driving slow maybe i am dragging the presentation there is some truth in it it could be rooted in your childhood and the last point he makes in this one is where he's like, he takes a $20 note. Uh, I think he chews it up, crumples it, stamps on it, throws it on the floor, all these different things. 
and then he picks it up again and she asks the crowd, has it stopped being a 20? It's still a 20, right? So whatever they do or say, you always keep your value. That's a very nice message. And I'll cut it there. Chubla cha, chubla cha. You decide what you want to put in the spam. Oh my gosh, just speak.